Uh, I'm also a guitar player. This one's a little, the UI is kind of a mess, but um, I really love the idea of pitch tracking the guitar. And so what Edwin and I did was that there is, there's a bunch of pitch trackers already native to Max. Um, F0, I think Sigmund's still kicking around somewhere. Um, but there's one that exists in the pure data space, which is the open source space, um, written by a really amazing C++ developer called Katja Vetter. She, she's from the Netherlands. She contributes a ton to that community. And she wrote, she ported an algorithm called the SNAC algorithm, the special normalized autocorrelation algorithm, which um, deals with a really interesting problem. So like if you've ever used any of those MIDI guitar stuff, um, you know, those uh, Roland pedals or whatever. Um, they probably do a better job now, but um, at least 10 years ago, <laughs> tracking uh, was kind of hard, and especially if you wanted to control bends and things like that. Um, so the the algorithm that she authored as a pure data plugin, or pure data external, uh, did a really good job um, uh, tracking monophonic lines and, and bands and, and Glissandos and things like that. So we Ed, Edwin and I ported it to Max and built this little pitch tracker, which again is free if you want to download it and try it out. I'd love for somebody to actually improve it. Frankly, I mean it's it, it works mostly. But the general idea behind this was that you can record the pitch, and again this is coming more from a modular angle. So rather than generating a MIDI event that you then feed to a digital software instrument. Um, this is kind of more this, the relationship between CV and like pitch or pitch CV. Uh, I built this with the ambition to map the, the, the frequency from my guitar to control an, an oscillator and an operator. And that's what I've tried to do here. Um, so the, I have this on an audio track. This is a pitch tracker. You can, we, I built a few presets. You can try them out. Basically it leverages processing in different ways to accommodate different pitch ranges or registers. You know, obviously a soprano is going to be a different set of pitches or register to, in, in comparison to like a bass guitar or something like that. So, and the reason to do that is so that you don't, you're not exhausting your CPU uh, too much because the more you're trying to accommodate the, well, well, that's, that's one reason. The other reason is latency, which <laughs> is not a really good conversation about um, so, uh, if you want to minimize your latency, well, actually, if you wanted to say track a bass guitar, um, you're going to be playing lower pitches. That takes a larger block of samples to determine a pitch. And so the latency is greater. So that's one reason to kind of reconfigure it and have presets for that. Um, so if you play a guitar, or if you sing, if you produce higher pitches, basically you have fewer latency problems to deal with. <laughs> in the world of like pitch tracking. But anyway, I'm gonna shut up and play. Um, so there's my guitar. Uh, it has eight strings, cause you know, I like heavy music. Heavy drum music and stuff like that. And I've just got the guitar running through um, uh, Echo. And my favorite preset, which I wanted to share with you all, it's the Dark Fade Analog under Vintage. It has this really nice, um, I just, Echo is really worth talking about because it has that, uh, I, I gotta give cred to uh, Thomas Fold because he pointed this out when we were on a trainer event at the University of Michigan, just the drive uh, at the input stage. It's pretty nice, it, it sounds pretty, almost warm. Um, so what I'm going to do here, you can see the pitch, the tracking, if you look over on the left here, you can see the notes are displayed kind of all over the place. But when I play very clear tones, it tracks pretty well. It's definitely monophonic. Um, if I play two tones together, you'll get the aggregate pitch. So, so that's definitely not a sharp. But anyway, uh, if I want to map that to operator, I can do that. You can see... It's already kind of, well, it's actually already mapped, but let me go through the process. Um, do, do, do. So click this map button and then click on the thing I want to map. So it doesn't make any sense to map it to that. 
Um, but if I want to map this thing, then you see, hey, I'm playing 331 hertz or whatever. And the Helmholtz plug in or device also has this smoothing option, so you can actually have like pitch glide essentially, which is kind of a fun effect. Um, so let's hear what that sounds like. It kind of you can see when I'm not playing, it jumps around a bit. That's where you would use the input sensitivity to the threshold, or right, any kind of bumps in the road. Um, one thing with pitch trackers that's incredibly hard to manage is. When I'm playing a tone, it'll probably at the tail end, it may pick up an octave higher or an octave lower. So, but sometimes as in, in the spirit of Mason, uh, sometimes the, the bugs are actually kind of cool and add to the, add to the mix. So, uh, let's see what this sounds like. So, so then hopefully we can get something a bit better than that. Uh, I mapped it to the multi, which multi parameter here, which allows you to kind of uh, jump around on the octave. Sorry about that. It kind of bugs out some bottom notes too, but it generally does a pretty good job. The latency is fairly minimal. Um, and, and again, in the spirit of Mason, like mixing it in with like live instruments is actually pretty cool. I think, um, if you want to explore that too. Uh, so let's, let's bring the guitar back into the mix. So the bands, let's check out the bands. Tracks pretty well, you know, for a little max about live device. Does my brother pretty well? Sounds great with an Evo. Get that on. Sorry, that's probably a little hot. So, yeah, I mean, you can do a little bit of thresholding there, and it can certainly um, be a little less sensitive, for sure. Um, so that's the pitch tracker. It's free. Download it. Play around with it. See what you think.